بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اینڈ ٹو ڈے ود دا نیکسٹ ٹاپک دیٹ از واٹ دی لینئر کانسٹنٹ کوفیشنٹ ڈفرینشیل اکویشنس ایل ٹی آئی سسٹم ڈسکرائب بائی دیز اکویشنس اینڈ وی سی دیم ان کانٹیکسٹ آف واٹ دی لیپلا ٹرانسفارم فائن سو coming from the very beginning basically you know this very well we've already seen them in the Fourier series we've seen them in the Fourier transform in a great detail the same is the case over here also so we may just go in a little speed over here maybe not in that sort of a detail so you know very well uh, uh, about the relationship of an uh, of an input output relationship of what of an LTI system an LTI system is described by an impulse response right so the output of the system y of t this would be equal to the input signal convolved with with the impulse response h of t this is x so this is the time domain representation if you want to see the frequency domain representations of taking the plus transform of each and everything x of s now the lti system would be you know uh, uh, defined by the system function h of s and the output y of s through the convolution property it would be equal to x of s multiplied h of s so this is the basic input output relationship in time and frequency domain respectively of the LTI systems now let's say I am given uh, I am given a differential equation uh, an LCCDE right a linear constant coefficient differential equation let's say I am given one equation what is it uh, uh, so let's say I have the first derivative of y of t with respect to t plus 3 times y of t and this is equal to x of t this is an equation given to us I am asked to find the system function and then the corresponding impulse response of this system fine so how do you do it if uh, you know method number one could be uh, that uh, you take if x of t is let's say an exponential function exponential of st right so this implies what the eigenvalue property the eigenvalue property implies what if this is the eigenvalue of the system so this implies that my output y of t would be some scaling factor and the scaling factor is the system function h of s multiplied exponential of st the same input back you put x of t you put y of t in this equation and you solve for h of s solve for h of s so mathematical calculations manipulations derivatives integrations i cannot solve time consuming difficult to solve i cannot do it at least i anyways we have a method number two what is the method number two method number two is the laplace transform take laplace transform of both the sides of both sides so what do i mean i say that if you have the laplace transform of what laplace transform of the right the left side the derivative of y of t plus three times y of t uh, and this is equal to the Laplace transform of x of t. Is the, isn't it like this? It is. So, you know the derivative property. Y, y of t has the corresponding Laplace transform y of s. x of t has corresponding Laplace transform x of s. So, what do we have over here? We have the derivative property, the differentiation property. So, this would be s times y of s for the first term 3 is a constant so you have a plus 3 and then you have y of t so the Laplace transform would be y of s and this is equal to the Laplace transform of x of uh, x of d so this would be equal to x of s right so which means uh, I can write it as what I can write it as an uh, 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 s uh, uh, y of s I can take common and then I could have an s plus 3 in a bracket and this would be equal to 
x of s so this would again imply what that uh, y of s divided by x of s this is equal to 1 upon s plus 3 have a look y of s divided by x of s is what h of s what is my unknown h of s so have i not got my h of s h of s is equal to 1 upon s plus 3 isn't it fine so this we did what this we did through the Laplace transform have a look how easily in a number of steps question a Laplace transform is completely characterized by two things we already know the first is the algebraic expression we've got it the algebraic expression the second is the region of values of the region of of the s plane for which values of s this laplace transform would converge the roc the region of convergence in the second characterization do we have a roc no where is the roc no we don't have it so this is not complete this is not the complete manipulation. This is not the complete answer for H of S. Why? Because the ROC is unknown. Because the ROC is unknown. So how, what to say about the ROC? What to say about the ROC? To find the ROC, some extra information is required. To find ROC, what do we need? We need some extra information. And that extra information is what? That is about the stability or the causality of the system. The stability or causality of the system. So if we are given that this is a stable system, on the basis of that we would define the ROC. If we are given this is a causal system, on the basis of that we would define the ROC. Let's say, let's say we are not given anything about it, so we could say, uh, we could take all the possibilities, right? So if at minus 3 the pole lies, the pole lies at minus 3. So if this is minus 3 this is the j omega axis this is the sigma axis so one possibility could be that this lies to the right of the pole so if it lies the roc lies to the right of the pole so it would cover the entire s plane like this the right half plane and this is now suggesting that this is a causal system why because this is lying to the right of the rightmost pole it's coming is going to infinity covering the rightmost the right half plane so this would suggest that this is a causal system have a look it is also including the j omega axis so we would say that this is a stable system as well fine similarly similarly if you if you say this is your j omega axis this is your sigma axis this is minus 3 now the next possibility could be that it lies to the left of the pole and covers the left half plane all of it so what could you say about this this is an anti-causal system this is an anti-causal system we saw it in the videos right and have a look this is not including the j omega x is the Fourier transform could not be found out now so which means what this is a non stable system so these are the only two possibilities so when we're not given anything about it if uh, for example we were given in the beginning that this is this this uh, equation is describing a stable system so we would consider this roc if we were given that this uh, system is describing an, an unstable system so 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 we would be uh, we would be considering the second roc and well, by the way this is not non-stable okay this is unstable anyways this is not in english class so let's say i uh, do what i do another example i do Another example in the very same way. In the very same way. The second, let's say this was my example number one. My second example is the second derivative of y of t. Minus the first derivative. 
minus 2 times y of t and this is equal to x of t. Again, you know, uh, you, you are uh, asked to find what? You are asked to find the all the possible impulse responses. You are asked to find all possible impulse responses. So have a look. Uh, H of S, wait. All possible impulse responses. So which means what? That the extra information is not given again, which means we are not given anything about stability or causality. So again we were asked to find all the possible impulse responses for this. So uh, what can we do? And so we will then comment on the causality and stability also. So have a look. The second derivative is involved. So the second derivative would have a Laplace transform s square times y of s right minus this thing would have an s times y of s first derivative minus 2 is a constant y of t would have a co corresponding y of s this is equal to x of s isn't that fine till here it is this implies what y of s I take common s square minus s minus 2 this is equal to x of s y of s divided by x of s is 1 upon s squared minus s minus 2 if I write it in factors form s squared plus s minus 2 s minus 2 fine 1 upon s into s plus 1 minus 2 into s plus 1 have I not got my corresponding system function y of s by x of s is this s plus 1 s minus 2 this is my h of s now again I, uh, you know, want to have the possible ROCs, right? Uh, but first, uh, you know, uh, uh, what? We also need to find the impulse response. So for impulse response, we would need to take the, the inverse of this, right? So if I take the inverse of this, so how would I do it? I could uh, do what? I could do it by a partial fraction, right? So I would have an A upon S plus 1 plus B upon s minus 2 and solving this would imply what you would get an a equal to negative 1 over 3 you would get your a equal to negative 1 over 3 and you would get your b equal to positive 1 over 3 so this is your negative 1 over 3 this is your positive 1 over 3 you can do it by your partial fraction expansion method so now uh, the impulse the 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 what the inverse uh, you know uh, very well uh, for the two uh, most important cases the two most important cases are exponential of negative a t u of t the corresponding Laplace transform is 1 over s plus a sigma is greater than minus a is the region of convergence similarly if you have a negative a t x u of minus t the corresponding laplace transform is again 1 over s plus a this time sigma's value is less than minus of a so have a look over here minus 1 over 3 is the constant right so just keep this in mind just keep this in mind this is your corresponding h h of t right uh, sorry h of s this is your h of s now uh, we do what if you have your h of t to be right sided number one case would be what if h of t is right sided so right sided what do i mean by the by the right sided so have a look uh, one pole is at uh, minus one the other is at plus two this is minus 1 this is plus 2 so right sided mean this lies to the right of the rightmost pole so this is one possibility this is one possibility which means now what the impulse response I could write it as this h of t 
is equal to so have a look negative 1 over 3 is a constant exponential of negative t u of t right negative t u of t for negative 1 yes plus 1 over 3 is a constant yes exponential of 2t this for the right sided exponential of 2t u of t fine so this is the first possibility so have a look if h of t is right side what does this suggest this system is causal the system is causal why because it's lying to the right of the rightmost pole the roc and uh, the 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 one it's covering the entire s plane so this one is basically for the right side and this one is for the left side fine right so this was possibility number one the second the second could be that if your h of t is left sided And, and how would be the left sided so if uh, you know I draw it over here it rise to the to the to the left of the leftmost pole right so now for the left side we would consider this uh, this uh, opposite inverse so h of t would be equal to what negative 3 is a constant 1 over 3 right for so this negative 1 would come over here again then you have an exponential of negative 80 so a is 1 and you have u of minus t right then plus 1 over 3 is again a constant again a negative 1 for this right exponential of negative 2t u of minus t now have a look uh, so the system is unstable in the first case also it's unstable in the second case also in the second case it's anti-causal now why because the system uh, because it's lying to the left of the leftmost pole and it's covering the left half plane anti-causal unstable let me write unstable over here also in the first case Similarly, the next possibility could be that the, the final possibility if your impulse response h of t is double sided. What do I mean? So in that case, the ROC would lie in between the two poles. So have a look. Now what we would consider? For the negative one, we would consider right sided. For the positive t, we would consider left sided. So now my h of t would become what? For positive, for 1, we would consider right sided. So this one. So negative 1 over 3 is a constant. Exponential of negative t, u of t. Plus 1 over 3 is a constant. For 2, we consider the left side. So minus 1 would come over here. Exponential of minus 2t, u of minus t. So this is the impulse response for the second case. Fine. For the final case, right? Now have a look. Is it causal? No. Is it anti-causal? No. What sort of a behavior is this? This is a stable system. This is a stable system. And how is this a stable system? Why? Because this is including the J omega axis. This is including the j omega axis. So I believe uh, these two simpler examples are enough to understand what we wanted to understand. Fine. Anyway, this was. Uh, let's say we generalize it also. Let's say we generalize it first. Let me remove the board. Okay. So uh, why have I left this? So I have a reason. Let's say I write it over here. Okay. So we generalize it for what? We generalize it for an nth order linear constant coefficient differential equation. And we know how is the nth order system given by. So this is a summation 
k running from 0 to n a k right and then the kth derivative of y of t with respect to t and similarly on the other side we have the x terms so k running from 0 to m let's say b k the, de the kth derivative of the x of t terms fine so now what do you do you apply the laplace transform apply laplace transform on both sides so if you apply the laplace transform on both sides so let's say i show it over here now let's say i take the summation outside similarly uh, a k is a constant so i take it outside as well so k is running from 0 to n a k and then you have the laplace transform of the kth derivative of y of t and similarly over here you take this outside k running from 0 to m b k and then you take the laplace transform of the kth derivative of x of t right so uh, so what do we have uh, this implies what that uh, the summation you would take it like this as it is k running from 0 to n a k the k derivative of y so we would have s to the power k y of s similarly on the other side the differentiation property right k running from 0 to m b k and the last one, the k derivative of x of t so you have s to the power k x of s and isn't it like this it is so have a look uh, this y of s is independent of the summation take it outside x of s independent of the summation take it outside so have a look y of s k running from 0 to n a k s to the power k x of s k running from 0 to m b k s to the power k i needed to find impulse response h of s y of s divided by x of s is what it's h of s so i've got the corresponding i've got my answer y of s divided by x of s which is equal to h of s so i have got it i have got this as k running from 0 to m b k s to the power k divided by k running from 0 to n a k s to the power k this is the equation for the system function of an nth order linear constant coefficient differential equation is that fine it is again have a look again we have only got the mathematical representation the algebraic expression the associated roc for associated roc we need extra information and that extra information is in, in, in the form of causality stability anything initial conditions we see in the next video initial conditions anyways uh, so uh, you know let us uh, do what imply this equation over there so have a look we only have the first derivative so k runs from 0 to uh, a, a, to, to uh, and, and over here I have a dt right so k runs from 0 to m so first we have this so we don't have any derivative k is equal to 0 right so bk is 1 s to the power 0 is so you have a 1 right and then divide by divide by if you take the non uh, derivative term you have a 3 3 s to the power 0 is 1 plus uh, first derivative so a, a1 is 1 and s to the power 1 is s so you have s so so have a look you have an s plus 3 right you have an s plus 3 and and didn't we have it like this 
h of s is, so let me write it in a proper form, s plus 3 and we have already proved it to be like this, right? Have a look. The second, can you do it yourself? Can you do it yourself? Let me do it. x terms first. So again, k0 without derivative term, the bk is 1. s to the power 0 is 1. So you have a 1 divided by k0. So k0, uh, so ak is minus 2. a of 0 is minus 2. And s to the power 0 is 1, right? Then a1, a1 is with the first derivative, is a minus 1. And then s to the power 1 is 1. So minus 2 minus s. And then a a2 so a2 is with the second derivative the coefficient is 1 and then you have plus s squared so have a look uh, do we not have it like this 1 over s squared minus s minus 2 and then I proved it to be s plus 1 into s minus 2 s plus 1 into s minus 2 or s minus 1 into s plus 2 so we did it over here and you know this very well this is the very same thing so have a look this is what was this topic that is it about this video that is about the LTI systems characterized by LCC DE if you have any problems feel free to ask in the comment section till the next video take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers and do subscribe to the channel goodbye